Hello everybody, Ellie here for Who Culture. I'm back and I want to talk about Mrs. Flood. You know, that mysterious neighbour of Ruby Sunday that we still know very little about? I want to talk about her. Before I do talk about her though, just one thing I want to cover uh, before we jump into that topic. Um, just a quick congratulations to Shooty Gatwa, who won a, a Welsh BAFTA last night uh, for his role as the Doctor in Doctor Who, in case that wasn't clear. Um, I'm not sure if he won for a specific episode or just overall for the character of the Doctor, um, but he's great in every episode, especially Boom, I think that's a standout episode, so very well deserved, well done Shooty Gatwa. But as well as the Welsh BAFTAs this weekend, we also had Cardiff Comic Con, and one of the guests at Cardiff Comic Con was Anita Dobson, who plays Mrs Flood. Um, and she dropped a few interesting hints and teases about what we can expect from Mrs Flood going forward. So firstly, she said that by the end of season two, we will know everything about Mrs. Flood. I think that was probably what we were all expecting, um, but it's good to have confirmation that we are going to know everything about Mrs. Flood by the time we get to the end of season two. Um, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it's a little bit more satisfying and makes more sense than the whole Ruby's mum pointing at a lamppost that wasn't there to start with situation. We all know how I feel about that, um, but let's hope that the Mrs. Flood reveal is more satisfying than that. Overall, I'm very intrigued by Mrs. Flood. I know I did say after the kind of disappointment maybe of the Ruby's mother revealed that um, there was slight concern or I had concerns about building up Mrs. Flood and there being disappointment, but I am still intrigued by who she is. Um, they've definitely dropped some hints there. Uh, the end of Empire of Death, of course, definitely dropped some hints and made us think, Ooh, what's going on here then? Um, so overall, yeah, I'm very intrigued excited to learn more about Mrs. Flood and I hope that it pays off well. So Anita Dobson also um, was talking about the secrecy around the role and how at first even she didn't actually know the end game for Mrs. Flood um, and, and that she basically had to wait until she got the scripts for season two to find out what was happening with her character. Now one thing that she did say when she was talking about this um, was that she said and I quote I know where I come from. Now, I don't know whether maybe we're just reading into this a little bit too much, but I know where I come from. That sounds like Mrs. Flood comes from a specific planet or place. Am I wrong there? It seems like an odd thing to say if she's just from some random unknown place or just ran random neighbor. It sounds like there's something specific about where she's from that's very relevant and important. Now we've been speculating for a little while now that Mrs. Flood is a god of some sort. Now we do have an entire video full of speculations about who Mrs. Flood might be, so that is linked on the screen now, so go and check that video out if you want to get into our deep dive of who Mrs. Flood might be. But the gods and, and the pantheon, they don't come from anywhere specific. They kind of just pop up. You know, like Maestro literally popped up out of a piano. But I would say this to me sounds more like that Mrs. Flood has a specific point of origin. Um, I know where I come from. To me, it screams Gallifrey. It seems maybe the most obvious, but also, why would you say I now know where I come from? if it isn't a, a significant place. But I can't think of anywhere else that really jumps out as a significant point of origin to the point where she'd say, I know where I come from. Or we're reading way too much in a comment that Anita Dobson made at, at Cardiff Comic Con. Um, I guess time will tell. We'll find out. So the other thing that was very interesting is that Anita basically seemed to suggest that there's more to come from Mrs. Flood after season two or at the very least that season two teases that there could be more. So this is what she said. Even at the end of the next series, there's a line that Mrs. Flood says, and I thought, that's kind of a little bit odd for her to say at this point. So at that point, she still has another twist or a test. You're not quite sure. You think she's one thing, but you don't know. She always keeps a few things in her pocket. My guess here would be that we do learn all about Mrs. Flood, who she is, what her story is, and her kind of arc in, in Doctor Who could potentially be wrapped up at the end of season two, but then perhaps there'll be a line or two that kind of makes you go, hmm, I wonder what that means. Now, this is not new for Russell. He always does this. He kind of plants seeds for the future of the show. You know, we had the boss 
Obviously, that was mentioned by the Meep in the Star Beast. The Toy Maker mentioned his legions, and even stuff like the Master's Ring being picked up by that mystery hand in The Last of the Time Lords. You know, just little seeds that could be picked up further down the line. So I don't necessarily think that there are definite plans for us to see more of Mrs. Flood beyond season two, but I do think that Russell perhaps will leave a few teases in there, drop a hue, a hue? drop a few hints um, so that if he does want to bring her back, there's a thread to pull on, an interesting way to bring her back um, if a story necessitates it or if an opportunity arises. Having said that though, we do know that some of the scripts for season three have been written. So, you know, maybe Mrs. Flood is in some of those already. Who knows? I certainly think it would be interesting for her to drop back in. I mean, the thing is, it all depends on who she turns out to be. Um, if she's a kind of a villain of some sort that needs to be defeated, if at the end of season two she's defeated, then you'd have to think about how she's going to return if she does return. Um, it all just depends on who she ends up being as to whether it would make sense for her to um, appear in, in future seasons of the show. I like the mystery. Just hope it pays off. I know I said that already, but I really hope it pays off. Okay, and now let's talk about Space Babies. Space Babies, Ellie, I hear you say. Why would you be talking about Space Babies? Well, Anita was talking about her scene on the roof at the end of Empire of Death and how it was really random and weird, um, which, which it kind of was. But then she went on to explain that Russell never does anything without a reason and that apparently this includes Space Babies. So here's what she said. Do you remember the first episode, the babies on that planet that were running the spaceship? I watched it and thought, what's this about? Where's this come from? When I started filming what you're going to see soon, I thought, I think I know what this is about. Everything's tied up. Everything's done for a reason. Now, whether this means that Space Babies has some sort of link to Mrs. Flood herself, or if Space Babies is linked to season two in general, I'm not entirely sure. But it is certainly an interesting thing for her to say. Now, I'm not going to lie, it was a little bit surprising at first to hear her say this um, for Space Babies to be mentioned. But actually, the more we sat down and started to think about it, it, it kind of does make sense. Russell has spoken in the past about how season one and season two um, essentially were commissioned as a package. They were commissioned at the same time. And we obviously know that Ruby's story does continue into season two. So it kind of sounds like both seasons are two halves of one bigger story. And when you do look at them that way, it kind of starts to make more sense that they could overlap and connect um, in all these different seemingly unusual and random and out of nowhere ways. Again, it just kind of lends itself to the theory that season one and two are more connected than we initially thought and undercooked, underdeveloped plot lines that we noticed in season one might not be totally over with. As for Space Babies specifically, if you remember, the Doctor openly comments in Space Babies that it's a bit of a coincidence that he and Ruby went from babies, as in the whole situation with the church on Ruby Road, to babies again in Space Babies. What is it with you and babies? I was going to say the same thing to you. Going from baby to baby. So it wouldn't be surprising, to me at least, if Russell kind of was kind of seeding things right from the beginning there, setting things up right before our eyes, right under our noses, and then at the end of season two, we'll look back on both seasons and it will form this kind of big interconnected picture that um, doesn't make sense in small doses, but once it's all pieced together, will be a revelation. And let's not forget we had the whole coincidences thing and the language of luck uh, in the Churchill Ruby Road as well. So maybe that's relevant to the whole situation as well, this idea of coincidences and things being tied together. Now, let's just be clear here. I, I don't think this means that the space babies are gonna rock up in season two and save the day and be like superheroes. At least I hope that's not the case because, I mean, the space babies were a bit silly. Um, I, yeah, I don't think it will be anything as on the nose as that, but maybe something a little bit more thematic, um, as in something to do with all of the babies or orphans and a connection to Ruby somehow. And maybe the Doctor kind of realising, ah, that the TARDIS took us to that baby space station for a reason. It was trying to show us something, trying to tell us something, um, rather than it just being the babies are going to return. The other alternative could be, you know, like Henry Avery in A Good Man Goes to War, 
uh, where basically one of the babies shows up at some point for a quick moment to help the Doctor out, and that's the only connection there is. Or maybe that farting spaceship turns up like Danny Boy did and guns down a Dalek saucer, I don't know, maybe that's the connection. Again, that might be a little bit more on the nose, um, but for a, a brief little in-joke, perhaps? So I think overall, Anita Dobson did a very good job in this uh, convention panel to tease some things, to get us talking, um, I always get a little bit nervous when people who don't necessarily do conventions very often, who are playing a mysterious character, come on stage to answer questions and I get a little bit nervous that they're going to reveal something they weren't supposed to. You know, like the whole Shooty Gatwa thing on the Graham Norton show, saying something maybe he wasn't supposed to. Um, it does make me a little bit nervous, but I don't think Anita Dobson's given anything away too much. I think the biggest surprise was the whole Space Babies situation. That was not something I had on my bingo card for her to discuss. Um, the other things, you know, could she potentially return after season two? I think that's always a question for all characters unless they're dead. And even when they're dead, that doesn't mean anything. And obviously the whole idea of learning who she is by the end of season two. I think if, if we didn't, there would be uh, some complaints about, about that. So um, yeah, I think the biggest takeaway from this was definitely the Space Babies conversation. Um, but she did, she did a good job of not spoiling anything. Well done. Um, I would really be very nervous if I had to do one of those sorts of talks and there were specific things that people I, I knew people were going to ask me about but I also knew I couldn't talk about. It seems like a very stressful situation to be in. So, well done Anita Dobson. <laughs> um, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Have you had any more theories about who Mrs Flood might be? Um, I'm intrigued. What are your thoughts on the things we've revealed in this video? Um, if you also haven't already checked out our theory video about who Mrs. Flood might be, um, then do go and check that one out. Maybe one of your theories is in our video already covering that, so go check that out as well. In the meantime, I've been Ellie for Who Culture, and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.